Welcome to Cues and Views, first on the web for collecting English billiard cues. Most of the videos that we've produced for Cues and Views so far have been on the introductory side of uh, antique billiard cue collecting. To go a little bit deeper into the hobby and to perhaps get you thinking as enthusiastically as I do about it, I'd like to go into a little bit more depth. Um, in a short while I'm going to show you a cue that I used as my actual playing cue for a few seasons in the snooker leagues in, in where I'm from. Um, which is an actual Tom Newman facsimile cue. Now the word facsimile sounds like a quite modern word because it's where we get the um, thought process of the fax machine which <laughs> ironically is a thing that, of the past what with email and so on today but the word facsimile means uh, similar to or a replica of something facsimile it's got the word face in it and simile which means similar so facsimile cues have been around for very long time. Uh, some of them are um, facsimile cues obviously of famous players. When I say famous players I mean famous players of the past obviously. Now when I first started collecting um, old cues the most readily available Tom Newman cue that you would see was like this one at the end which is the Tom Newman champion cue. Now, the Tom Newman Champion Cue, it mentions his... Oops, am I on the right one? Yes, I am. It mentions the... Uh, on the badge, it mentions the, bad, the break of 1,370, which was the highest break ever made with billiard, uh, ivory billiard balls that Tom Newman made. Now, that cue continued to be made well after um, the heyday of Tom Newman in the, in the 20s and very early 30s. So that cue was quite readily available when I was first collecting. Now the check so we call that cue the Tom Newman Champion cue. In this bunch of cues that I have here, this isn't the earliest record break Tom Newman cue, but it's a Burroughs and Watts cue. It's the 1274 and again it says facsimile cue on the badge. Now what you'll notice first off is that the Burroughs and Watts cue hasn't got a face in splice. And it's made with this more stripy ebony. This is black ebony. You'll notice that the wording on the badge is different. You'll notice that on this one we have the McMorran more cues symbol. Whereas obviously on the Burroughs and Watts one we don't. On, on another one here we have the remnants of the same symbol. Now these factors, the record breaks that are mentioned, the condition of a cue, the length of, of the cue, <clears throat> Even the playability, in other words, the ease at which a variety of players can play well with a cue, affects the value. But most of all, you would say the condition, but what is written on the badge. This little group uh, of Tom Newman cues that I'm going to show you now, this one was in the last group, so were these two. But the others are different. Now that's not to say that they aren't um, still Tom Newman, for example, this one's a Tom Newman champion cue, whereas the one with the Marcus uh, transfer and the fibre ferrule was maple, this one is in ash. Again, it's full length, it's very good playable weight, uh, full length as I said before, full taper, it's not overly slimmed towards the tip end, it's usable, playable, very good I think Tom Newman cue. Um, so that again, as we were discussing earlier, on, you, on uh, sorry, eBay, they don't always fetch what I would consider top money because they are considered the more common of the Tom Newman cues. However, in a playable weight, in great condition, I still think that is a worthwhile Tom Newman cue to collect. Uh, again, you may want to use it. Uh, people, may people may remember Sean Murphy, uh, former world champion. He used a Tom Newman cue, albeit slightly modified, from what I gather, slightly slim at the tip end, 
uh, from a collecting point of view, but obviously it worked for him. Uh, also, it had had the facing splice replaced with a piece of thuya burr, which is like um, very mottled and very pretty wood, and the badge replaced back on the queue. So it was effectively restored. Uh, but again, he used that queue for quite some time and uh, he did very well with it, as I think we'll all agree. Now, once again, those two facsimile Newmans with the Newman in block letters in, in the inverted commas are here again. The reason I have them here is because I consider them to be very rare. I've only seen these two. A good quality example has never come up for sale. Would be worth more than the Champion Q. But the question is, would these two queues or either one of these queues be worth more than the Champion Q when you consider the condition? A lot of people send me messages, emails, contact me different ways, and they say, uh, I have a Tom Newman queue. What's it worth? Frankly, I have no idea. Because the queue could be any one of these queues. It could be any badge, it could be any length, it could be any tip size, it could be damaged beyond repair, the weight could have been taken out. What I need people to do is to give me as much information as possible and where possible photographs and description of the queue. It's, it's guesswork, as I've said in other videos, it's guesswork if you say I have a Tom Newman queue, what's it worth? No good. I can't give you a quality guidance on price, desirability, if you don't give me more information. So, these are facsimile Newmans, and these are facsimile Newmans. Now again, when we look more closely at these two queues at this end, they are both the same queue. However, they don't look it. The facing splice on this is much brighter. There's the remnants of the McMoran more queues transfer. The badge is much blacker with the ink. However, in terms of valuation, this queue, which I used to use in the, in the league, most of the lettering, most of the ink has come out of the lettering, but it's a very strong, very usable, playable queue. My friend Dominic Dale played some billiards against me once, uh, and he played the best billiards he's ever played with that queue. Kind of fitting, if you think, when it's a Tom Newman queue, and he made such big breaks uh, at billiards, I guess, and uh, with Dominic's talent added to the queue's capabilities, very well. He did very well with the queue. In fact, he was meant to be going home at sort of 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock uh, from uh, my club, and he didn't leave till well after 9, because he was enjoying using the queue so much. Now, um, for billiards, he said he wouldn't want the queue, that queue particularly for himself, in terms of playing snooker because he found it too short but for some reason it helped him with his billiard stroke. So this one is a twin to that one and condition is better but which one's the more valuable? To me this one, the one I'm turning now, is worth every bit as much as the more desirable collectible one because it is such a good playable cue. So in a nutshell there you have it. Tom Newman cues come in a variety of styles, designs, lengths, tapers, condition, stickers, transfers, weight stamps, which I haven't really gone into, um, taper, as I've said, balance, everything. It looks like any other cue. And these cues really did get me enthusiastic about collecting cues, about noticing the variations of cues that were available, um, and therefore have sparked my whole collecting hobby really. I hope that you've enjoyed seeing them. It's not that often that you get a chance to see this variety of Tom and Newman's and, I, and as I've told you before there are more. Uh, it's quite a quite an expansive range of cues. Nothing like as numerous as the different Joe Davis cues um, which <laughs> again you could enjoy yourself collecting simply Joe Davis cues but they are nice collectible cues and I hope you've enjoyed seeing them.